I'm Cape Jewel, and this is Comic Smack. Your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we are taking a closer look at Amazing Spider-Man number 15, The Green Goblin. Peter Parker's greatest foe is ready to make his big return. What'll happen next? What will that mean for our hero? Well, let's hop on in together and find out, shall we? So, making use of the information that Kingpin gave him at the end of the Clone Conspiracy Omega, Peter Parker and his S.H.I.E.L.D. buddies Mockingbird, as well as local Latin American heroes Tarantula and Devil Spider, are ready to bust up a major drug cartel operation backed with weaponry given to them by Norman Osborn, the Green Goblin. Now, Peter has it in his head right now that this cartel isn't just being backed by Norman Osborn, but it's actually being run by Norman Osborn. You see, their leader is a guy called the Boar, an ugly green fellow who could pass for a goblin in the right light. Spider-Man is so dedicated to bringing this guy down and bringing him down hard, too, he pretty much disregards his team for a huge chunk of the mission, which is kind of dangerous. Why is Pete so serious right now? Well, after the fallout of the clone conspiracy and the jackal and coming so close to so many of his loved ones again, only to have them disappear into dust, Spider-Man really, really feels like he needs a good victory now, a W. Something that, you know, could make him feel a little bit better about this whole superheroing thing right now, which has been murky at best. As with oh so many supervillain layers, it begins to crumble, which means Spider-Man and Mockingbird have to get the bad guy out and save themselves from drowning. The good guys win the day, but we find out the boar is an Osborn. It seems that the Green Goblin's new gimmick right now is actually going around and stealing the faces of those he's arming with advanced technology. This makes him incredibly difficult for Spider-Man or S.H.I.E.L.D. to track, but Pete has a funny feeling that if Osborn is to surface again, he will do so in China on the eve of an Uncle Ben-themed charity mission. Which, wouldn't you know it, means Peter Parker's closest friends and family, including Aunt May, who is just getting over the death of her second husband, and Harry Osborn, are going to be in the line of fire right now. As being important parts of the Uncle Ben Foundation, they're also going to be at this big event. It's not all bad, though. We get a pretty funny scene of Mockingbird, Peter, and his family all traveling together. Pete in that classic fashion of, hey, I date pretty much every attractive woman who works near me for long. How come no one's ever shipped us, Bobby? Another major thrust of this issue is Peter Parker getting a little disillusioned with the good life of a rich CEO and longing for the days of being a street-level hero once again. This, taken with the whole webware malfunction, makes me think we will be seeing an end to Parker Industries sooner rather than later. Now, at the party, we see an incoming Cognito Green Goblin using his newest face. Before he can make his move, though, he's shocked to see his son Harry in the crowd. Moreover than that, Harry is going by his mother's maiden name now, Harry Lyman. And if there's one thing Osborne hates, it's any disrespect of his name that he loves so very much. Now, all throughout this issue, we've seen a mysterious invisible female figure stalking both Spider-Man and Norman. We're not exactly sure who she's after, but once she takes a shot at the Green Goblin at the party, it's revealed that this woman is none other than Silver Sable. This is all pretty shocking because Silver Sable's death actually weighed pretty hard on Peter Parker's mind, Slot having killed her off in what might have been the last Doc Ock-centric story before he became the Superior Spider-Man. The question, of course, being, is she a clone or the actual Sable back from the dead? Well, I guess we're going to have to read the next issue to find out, won't we? Now, normally this is where the comic and by extension the video would end, but this is a special $10 extra length issue of Amazing Spider-Man, so we got a bunch of other stories to work our way through. First up, we got a Christos Gage penned piece on Clash, Clayton Cole, that former villain turned employee for Parker Industries turned villain again during the events of Civil War, mainly due in part to the actions of Spider-Man himself. I kinda like this story, mainly because I kinda like Clash, as he is a very complicated individual. Peter assumes he just broke bad and became a full-on supervillain again, only he's actually doing something a little bit more altruistic. Yeah, he's got a gang of henchmen and he's robbing companies, but he's only robbing the evil companies like Roxxon, who are doing evil experiments on animals anyway, so Pete can't be 100% mad with him. Then there's a really odd little story about the Marvel Simpsons. I'm sure you've seen these at cons or at stores. I don't own one, but you know. But, you know, if someone wanted to send me one or something, I don't know. Geez, you know, I didn't want one, then I read a story about it, now I kind of want one. Man, the marketing is working. Next up, we have a story about all the supporting characters from the China office of Parker Industries. Honestly, I forgot most of these characters existed, and I'm sure you did too. The second to last story is a nice 
nice cute little palate cleanser wherein we see a young Peter Parker in his early days as Spider-Man trying to adopt a dog only for his aunt to not let him have it. Doesn't really go anywhere, but hey, cute is cute, am I right? Oh, but it's the last story people are all interested about. This is the one that gives us a nice little look forward into what might be coming down the pipeline for Spider-Man during the events of Secret Empire, and whose content was already kind of leaked out online, but if you don't want to be spoiled, now is your chance to skip to the end of the video. We check on in with Otto Octavius not long after the events of Clone Conspiracy, rocking the brand new perfect clone body, which he says he augmented with some of his own DNA, which basically explains why he's a younger, stronger looking Otto. Uh, apparently, he also put some fade genes in there because he's rocking one hell of a fade. Oc attempts to gear up at one of his old safe houses only to find that the place has been invaded by Hydra. Pfft, man, this is why you always get rent control, man. Using his fancy new body and enhanced octopus senses, get it? It's like spider sense, but for octopuses, Otto is able to defeat the thugs. It's at this point Dr. Octopus comes face to face with Armin Zola, the computer faced tech advisor for Hydra, and it would seem because Ock was able to beat up all the henchmen, it makes him a right sight better than most of the people working for Hydra at the moment. They're looking for a few good men, or should I say a few bad men, and because of that, Ock decides he can use the organization's money and technology to build himself a brand new costume dubbed the Superior Octopus. Personally, I would have preferred Sinister Spider-Man or Amazing Doc Ock, but hey, you know, I'd go with your own branding. So there you have it, everyone, Amazing Spider-Man number 25, and ultimately I enjoyed it. I know I liked it a whole lot more than I enjoyed Clone Conspiracy, but was this worth $10? No, 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 it wasn't. The main story was fine and feels very much like the better years of Dan Slott, Spider-Man, and all the other stuff. Well, it was okay. It mostly just felt like a bunch of ideas they had sitting around, stories that they would have fleshed out more if they didn't do the big Clone Conspiracy event. The Doc Ock stuff is definitely what I think people paid their money for if they pay it at all, and yeah, it's satisfying even if I feel that what happens with this character isn't going to be happening in the pages of Spider-Man. At the end of the day, though, I would feel comfortable giving this issue a 7 out of 10, and I'll just leave it at that. So, there you have it, everyone. Another issue of Spider-Man on the books. As always, if you want to see what other new videos I got coming down the pipeline, please, by all means, be sure to like and subscribe. And as always, if you want to support the channel and pick yourself up a nice little comic book trade at the same time, why not use my book depository link down in the description below. You get a little something, I get a little something, everybody wins, I tell ya. So, until we meet again, I've been Cape Joel, and I will see you in the next video.